Some big names are performing here in Connecticut this weekend, a monster weekend. Eric Danton, Hartford Current music critic. Is that fair? Music critic, rock critic, what do you prefer in that? Uh, the title is rock critic, but uh, it's everything rock that's critic? not jazz or classical, so. I just call you E, is that okay? That's fine by me, yes, man. <laughs> All right, big weekend going on. You had Jay-Z and Kanye. Weekend, huge weekend. Well, let's start with this. Start with Jay-Z and Kanye, uh, that collaboration. What's that been like, and how are they together in their performance? Uh, well, first of all, the album that they put out earlier this year, Watch the Throne, one of the right. biggest albums of the year. What did you think about it? I loved it. I thought it was great. I, it's, they're, they're two of the best rappers around. I mean, Jay-Z might be the best rapper on the planet right now, at least the best giant mainstream rapper like that. And Kanye, as far as a producer, uh, few people are coming up with things as creative as his are. Putting them together was a natural for me. Mm. And uh, I'm, I'm very glad this, this tour is coming to Connecticut. There was uh, the first round of dates they announced. We weren't on the, on the itinerary. And they added some more dates, including this Mohegan Sun show on Friday. And uh, I, it's... I think going to be one of the most interesting shows to take a look at. Two big egos in the room when you're collaborating. You always worry about egos and getting it done. There were some reports of friction. I mean, what do you sense on that as their ability to get along and play along? You know, I think it's going to be there. They've been collaborating with each other for years now. Uh, you know, Kanye's been producing beats for Jay-Z for a decade. You know, Jay-Z has appeared on a lot of Kanye's stuff. So right. it, it's not as if they're strangers to each other. They have worked together before, not exactly at this level where you've already done this album and now you're on the road together as well. But, you know, they're pros. Jay-Z, I think, at least, can put his ego aside. Kanye has had some trouble, uh, as right. I'm sure you're aware, right. with, with putting his ego aside. But this is, this is too big a thing to, to mess up with uh, self-interest, I think. And money, they're making a lot of money on this album, obviously, a lot right? Of money. So probably some kind of sequel coming up soon. Now, you mentioned Bohegan Sun. Uncasville is becoming a hot spot now, right? They're saying that when they go on the tour now, they go to Boston, and it's Uncasville, a place that few could pronounce a few years back, and yeah. then New York City. Talk about that now. Well, he could be becoming a hot spot for these people. Yeah, promos. really, that's been an ongoing thing over about the past five, six, seven years. Um, it's siphoned, in fact, a lot of entertainment away from Hartford, acts that in the past might have played XL Center back when it was the Hartford Civic Center, mm -hmm. or Comcast Theater under any of its various names, the Meadows, whatever. Some of those acts now go to Mohegan Sun. So Connecticut Why? is getting those more, acts. More, more money, more amenities? Yes. Yeah. All of that, yes. <laughs> Gambling, women. Yeah. <laughs> but casinos are just, casinos yeah. are known for paying higher salaries to musicians who are going there, so their guarantees are going to be higher. Uh, it's, it's not a huge room, so they can sell out. That always looks good right. if you have a salad on the itinerary. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is a convenient stop. And also, you know, Hartford doesn't have some of the amenities that, that these super high profile rock stars or, or, or musicians, celebrities are used to. Right. You know, they go to Mohegan Sun, there's a hotel right there. Right. You know, there's restaurants right there. There's everything you could possibly and want. That, and you that, don't even that have gambling to table the doesn't hurt either. Right? That gambling table is also right. As, appeal, and, you right? know, we've read the story, Mike Anthony wrote a great story in The Current a few years ago about uh, NBA stars coming right. down and getting private tables to play at. Michael Johnson, um, I'm imagining that, Michael, but Michael Jordan. Exactly, yeah, yeah same thing. You, you know, if, if you're a, a big name celebrity or musician and you want a game, I'm pretty sure they're going to set you up. <laughs> now, how about Katy Perry? You had Katy Perry, Guns N' Roses, a plethora of players in Connecticut. Real quick now, Katy Perry, what's been her uh, success so far? It's key to her success. We've missed that one. She was here earlier in the week. Right. Uh, in fact, from Mohegan to XL Center in Hartford. So she's gone up a size venue, uh, which is just a sign that she's getting bigger. What's, make, what's making her get bigger? Just catchy songs. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're kind of vapid, if you ask me, but they're super catchy. She's very vivid. She's easy to look at, and those are all things that are going to just help her. Her bigger, core bigger. audience would be who? Her core audience? Probably teenage girls and women in their 20s is mm -hmm. my guess. Not a bad uh, group of people to have, right? right. <laughs> Good demographic, that's, yeah, that's right. Guns and Roses. I thought those guys were broken up. Yeah, they're still well, together around? They, like Bad Penny, Stan, they keep turning <laughs> up. They keep turning up. The last time they were in Connecticut was almost 10 years ago. It was December of 2002. That was a little bit shaky. They kept the crowd waiting for almost two hours before they finally took the stage. Things are supposedly a little bit more settled this time. I interviewed the bass player uh, last week, and he says this time there's great camaraderie. Things don't feel as heavy as they have in the past. Axl Rose can get a, a little bit lost in his own head, I think. Mm. And uh, in a little bit. Yeah, in. He needs to be wrangled a little bit. Yeah, exactly. How exactly. about now changing gears? Javier Colon, the voice, the guy from Connecticut. The voice, that's right. I'm What's trying to get him on the show here. Your thoughts on this guy, an emerging star, great voice. Where can he go now with his talent? You know, I'm still surprised that it didn't break for him years 
years ago. I mean, he was here in the building, sitting pretty much where we are right mm. now, when this was the old photo studio, and we were taking pictures of him when his first Capitol album came out. What happened? It was a great record. It just, it just never went anywhere. It's one of those things in the music industry, sometimes it doesn't happen. Marketing and, and distribution, right? That's a, lot, that's a lot of it, yeah, or just wrong place, wrong time. You know, he's always been a superior talent. He can sing. He's got the look. Uh, he just needed that high-profile boost, and that's what The Voice did for him. Fifteen seconds. Michael Jackson, uh, Dr. Conrad Murray, found guilty of manslaughter. Your thoughts? What's the lesson to be learned here? A doctor being paid 150 grand a month to be a personal physician. What's the lesson, real quick, in, in all this? Well, the, the bigger lesson is who's buying the bed that they're selling. That's just creepy. Hmm. It's it's a tragedy all around. It still is. Even now, I mean, convicting Conrad Murray. What does it do? Right? Yeah, this I great mean, great talent is lost. Yeah, yeah. He, Michael's still gone. And we got to go to here. Eric Danton, I'm Stan Simpson. Thanks to all our guests, including Reese Norris and Scott Cray. Don't forget, catch our show 24-7 at ctnow.com slash Stan. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. For the good folks here at Fox Connecticut, I'm Stan Simpson. The Morning News and Tim Lammers is next.